Okay, in our video series on toxicology and poisoning, in this video, we'll be talking about opiate overdose. We'll discuss that what is the presentation of opiate overdose and we'll discuss the treatment of opiate overdose stepwise. First of all, opiate include compounds like morphine, heroin, which is a diamorphine, pethidine, codeine, brupinorphine. These all compounds cause CNS depression. They are commonly found in the form of analgesics, painkillers, cough suppressants, and even antidiarrheals. And they are also used as a drug of abuse like heroin. The presentation of a patient with opioid overdose would be a classical triad of coma, pinpoint pupils, and decreased respiratory rate. The respiratory depression central nervous system depression and pinpoint pupils. That is a classical triad of opioid overdose. Other symptoms that you would see is cyanosis due to decreased respiratory rate, decreased oxygenation of blood, there will be cyanosis. There will be episodes of apnea, episodes of no breathing. And sometimes in pediatric group, you might be able to see convulsions and hypotension due to CNS depression. Non-cardiogenic pulmonary edema can be seen in patients who are injecting heroin. And some compounds of opiate have delayed toxicity. Delayed toxicity like methadone, which has a long half-life of 15 to 60 hours. And they present with respiratory depression after a long time compared to other opiates. The most important aspect that you must have in your mind is that respiratory depression. Respiratory depression can cause death within one hour of overdose in some opiate compounds. Coming to the treatment of opiate overdose. Treatment of opiate overdose involves ABC approach. Airway, breathing, circulation. First of all, you protect the airway. As I said that these patients are at risk of respiratory depression and most often you would see decreased respiratory rate or even apnea in these patients. You must clear the airway and then you should consider ventilation if the patient has Glasgow coma scale of less than 8. When these patients, these overdose patients present to you in emergency, they are in comatose state and you perform Glasgow coma scale if, they're, if this is less than or equal to 8, you must go for intubation and ventilation. If the respiratory rate is less than 8 per minute, if the partial pressure of oxygen is less than 60 mm of Hg, even if the patient is breathing on oxygen, then in such cases you must go for intubation and ventilation. Then there are certain things that need supportive measures, supportive care, supportive care like hypotension. As I said, that opiates can cause hypotension. For hypotension, what you need to do is that you elevate the foot end of the trolley so that there is more venous return, more blood flow toward the brain. And if the blood pressure, systolic blood pressure is less than 90, you give 500 ml of normal saline. And if the patient is still not maintaining blood pressure, you give vasopressors, you give ionotropes. You treat the shock with resuscitation, ionotropes, and vasopressor. If the patient is unconscious, you must nurse the patient in semi-prone position because these patients are at risk of aspiration. So these patients must be uh, nursed in semi-prone position to prevent aspiration. Now coming to the specific antidote and most important treatment of opiate, which is Nelexone. Nelexone is a specific antidote for opiate overdose and it reverses respiratory depression and coma if given in sufficient doses at a sufficient time. So Nelexone must be used in the cases where respiratory depression is imminent. And you record the coma level, you record the GCS score, you record the pupil size and you check the respiratory rate. And then you give Nelexone. You give Nelexone in adults 0.4 mg IV. It is followed by a further dose of 0.8 mg after 60 seconds if there is no response. Aim is to reverse the respiratory depression. Then you again recheck the GCS score, the coma level, pupil size, and respiratory rate. And you compare these readings with the readings that you took before giving Nalexone, and you see the improvement in patient. In children, it is given as 100 microgram per kg, up to 2 mg, repeated as necessary. It can be given IV, 
IM or intranasal. Intranasal administration is done by dripping or spraying naloxone into the nose of the patient over 60 seconds. It enables rapid reabsorption of naloxone through the mucosa of nose. Remember that naloxone has short half-life and coma and respiratory depression can recur when the effect of naloxone wear off. It may happen that you may give naloxone to a coma patient, you may give naloxone in an opiate overdose patient and patient might show improvement and after some time that effect of naloxone wears off and that patient again gets into coma and respiratory depression. In such cases, more naloxone may be needed. Dose is adjusted according to the response, response in the coma scale, respiratory rate and pupil size. If repeated doses are required, then you should start an IV infusion of naloxone. After you have given the last dose of naloxone, you observe the patient for six hours. You keep the patient in hospital and you look for respiratory depression that that patient might not go into respiratory depression again. And if the patient has methadone ingestion, methadone overdose, you keep the patient for the next 24 hours in the hospital facility after the last dose of naloxone because methadone has a long half-life and respiratory depression can occur after days after the ingestion because of the long half-life of methadone. In summary, we talked about different compounds in which opiates are available. And then we talked about the presentation, the classical triad. We talked about the ABC approach, maintaining the airway, supportive measures, treating the shock, then giving the naloxone, and their dosages in adults and in children. Then we talked about the naloxone half-life and repeating the dosages and observing the patient. If you liked my video, please click on the subscribe button and check out my other videos on emergency medicine and toxicology series. The link of those videos is given in the description below. Thank you very much.